Pushing the boundaries of what is possible. Add snow and fired up fans, and you got yourself everyone's favorite snowboard competition of the year. This is the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. You got a little, you can use much more. Welcome everybody, Sal Master Kelly here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you to the winter wonderland of Vail, Colorado. It is here that the best snowboarders on the planet ascend for a perfectly groomed super pipe and the best slope style course of the season. Now the 37 year history of this event is full of legendary performances and progressive moments for snowboarding. It's the end of the season and all of the riders are looking to push themselves and the sport. Now, this mountain is already filled with iconic names, young Chloe Kim, Mark McMorris, Scotty James, just to name a few. But there's also a new guard of riders that are looking to make their first podium here at the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. I'm talking about names like Zoe sadowski Sanat, Haley Langlin, young Red Gerard, and Lion Farrell. But enough from me. Tina, get in here. Yes, yes, thank you, Sal. Are you uh fired up? I am, and yeah. you know what? Practice just finished, so we actually have to get going. But we have so much left to talk about. Yes, we do. Well, quickly, Lion Farrell, you mentioned him. Yeah. Uh, he's from Maui. That's a snowboarding mecca. <laughs> it really is. Uh, there's a bunch of other riders from places where you never would think. North Carolina, Australia, uh, New Zealand, that is more snowboarding. Norway, right. Finland, Japan, I mean, the list goes on and on. There's a lot of variety today. It's the We Are the World <laughs> US Open Snowboarding World Championships. <laughs> it is, I love it. Um, I was up there, though. Snow speed, gonna play a factor. Yeah. There's a bunch of new snow, so we'll have to keep our eyes on that. But we do really have to go. You wanna head to the top? I do. I got a, I got a whip. Wanna this ride? Thing? Yeah, let's yeah, go. Of course. While we head over to the booth, Tina, break down this year's slope style course for us. Thanks, Sal. It is big, and it's been so much fun to watch these riders practice earlier. And this course really is broken into two different parts. There's the rails up top, and then the jumps near the bottom, and this is feature number two with a couple different options, lending to creativity. And then right after those rails, it goes into the first jump, 60 feet, and then into the second jump, a transition feature. And it's all about that final jump right before the judges. And the format is the best of three runs scored out of 100. Each of the six features scored out of 10, up to 40 points rewarded for overall impression. And let's see exactly what a full run down this course looks like. Ready to take the course, San Clemente's very own Haley Langland. And Haley's a really talented rider, but just has never been able to put it together here at the US Open. Her rail riding is so mature. Look at that 50-50 to back lip and then 50-50 to backside 360. She has so many tricks on a course that offers so many options. And so heading into the jump section here, she'll start out with a front side 360. And you watch her landings and you watch the way she grabs. I mean, this, when you say style, she, her picture is right next to that word. Look at that backside 540 coming into this final jump switch for a cab 720. Okay, that was a very smart and strategic move. When she was coming into that final jump switch, I was kind of thinking to myself, are we gonna see the cab double? With a score of 77.50, she becomes the woman to beat. Next up, Miyabi Onitsuka of Japan. She scores a 74.10, moving her into second place. Followed by Finland's Eni Rukajarvi with a score of 69.85. From Westport, Connecticut, X Games gold medalist Julia Marino is no stranger to the pressure of big contests. She's one of only three women in this event who has been in a U.S. Open final before. And she's no stranger to the podium. She finished up third last year here. For as young as she is, she is so mentally strong. The pressure doesn't seem to get to her. I've seen her ride on some of the biggest events in the world, and it does not affect her. Cab double under flip right there. 
And then the crippler off that quarter pipe to regular jump landing. Coming into that third and final jump. Backside 720. So four insane runs in a row here to kick off the best of three run women's slope style final. And this was a fantastic start for Julia. It was nice and smooth. She landed everything, but it's somewhat standard for her, even though this trick, it's a cab double under flip. She makes it look so easy, but it is technical. She wraps things up with a backside 720, lands everything, but there is room for improvement. Finally, someone breaks the ceiling and gets into the 80s. An 80.35, Julia moves into first place. Zoe Sadowski Sanat, the 17 year old from Wanaka, New Zealand, and the top qualifier. Getting bronze at the Olympics was a dream come true. It really opened up a lot of possibilities for me, like invites to X Games and US Open and stuff. And just standing on the podium with Jamie and Anna was like next level. Um, and it really helped push New Zealand snowboarding. And there is that switch backside 900 that she is so well known for. That was one of the most stylish switch backside nines as well. And then on the transition feature, doing a front side 720 and rounding things out with a backside 540 holds on. Insane. Yeah, wow. 82.55 moves Zoe into first place, knocking out the two Americans. The leaderboard after one run is Zoe in first, Julia Marino in second, followed by Haley Langlin in third. In run two, everyone is pushing hard to better their scores. Luckily for everyone but Zoe, this contest is the best of three runs. And that three run format really allows for riders to push it, knowing that only one score will count. The conditions started changing in the second runs, with some of the new snow, it slowed things down, making it extra difficult to get the right speed and land in the perfect sweet spot on these jumps. Also, flat light conditions made it difficult to see the jumps and the landings. But with one more run and the pressure building, these riders have a chance to go back up, readjust, and throw it down on the third and final time. So after run two, the top four stays the same, and it will come down to the final run to beat Zoe Sadowski Sanat's top score of 82.55. For the third run, the start list is re-racked. Japan's Miyabi Onotsuka with a 78.87 moves her into third place, hoping to secure herself a podium finish. Haley Langland unable to hold on and finishes fourth with her first run score of 77.5. And the last competitor able to take that top spot away from Zoe will be Julia Marino. And Julia went extra big on this trick, the cab double under flip, and then even added another 180, but goes down. And Julia will take second with her first run score of 80.35. Zoe Sadowski Sanat, your 2019 Burton US Open snowboarding champ. What does winning the US Open mean to you? Um, so much. It was one of the first contests I watched, like when I first started competing, and I just wanted to go. I've wanted to go since I started snowboarding, and like, dude, I'm just so, so stoked right now. Here is our final leaderboard with big congratulations to Zoe for her first win ever at the US Open. But we are not done with this amazing course. Men's slope style is up next when we return to Vail, Colorado. You are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. The Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series, is brought to you by Kia Motors America. Give it everything. By Burton. Burton has been built on boards since 1977. As you can see, the snow is coming down here in Vail, Colorado, and that's going to be a factor in this men's slope style finals. The format is the best of three runs scored out of a possible 100 points. 24 years old, an X Games gold medalist, a Swedish Olympian at Sochi, what does Sven Thorgren have in store for us on his first run? 50-50 backside, 270 transfer. Frontside 270 on, 270 off. 
And switch board slide. Under flip seven, bringing it around to Fakey. And then you could see right there having problems on that landing. It looked like he had some speed issues a little bit there on that cab 12. Oh, but that was nice getting that full rotation around and just pointing it here at the bottom feature. He's going back 14. Oh, and he gets it. And look at the grab on that. Unorthodox grabs on big spins and he does them flat. I love Sven Thorgren's style of jumping. And Sven really set himself apart right out of the gate, doing tricks that no one else really is doing and adding his own signature style. See that nose grab? That adds to the overall impression score. And then he finishes things up with a 1440, four full rotations, setting a very high standard. And Thorgren sets the bar early at 79.6. The reigning champion, Mark McMorris of Canada with a 53.35. That will not sit well with him. He will look to improve in one of his next two runs. The 20-year-old rider from Hawaii, Lion Farrell, laid down a solid run and scores a 73.45, moving into second place. Our next two teenage Japanese riders both had qualifying scores that broke into the 80s. Hiroki Kunitake, 17 years old, from Aichi. He scores a 64.35. Here is Ruki Tobita from Tokyo. He too will be glad that this is a best of three runs format as he scores only a 40.85 with that fall. Next up, the top qualifier, the local boy, Redmond Gerard. Dropping last is weird for me. I never really qualify first, but it's interesting and it's, I don't know, it's fun, whatever. <laughs> All right, boys. Yeah, bro, I love you. Got it. You know, you never get any answer from him that doesn't feel measured or thought about. Yeah. And you see that in his snowboarding as well. Absolutely. And we've been saying all week that this course really suits the way that Red Gerard approaches a slope style course. Look at the speed he is coming out of the rail section with. Switch backside 1260. And then the front side, 1080. Power of the squat. Back side, triple cork, 1440. Are you kidding me, Red Gerard? Holy cow. That is US Open snowboarding right there. That wow, that run was almost near perfect. Red Gerard really interpreting this course in his own way, but the best part was the landings on all of these features. Watch his board. And then he finishes off with this giant backside triple cork 1440 going off access. We have a contest. Red crushed that run, a score of 80.55. I was pretty scared of dropping in for sure. Practice is kind of crazy with all the snow, but I'm pretty happy that I landed one and yeah, let's go from there. He spoke to us about the pressure of being the last to drop. Now he has the pressure of waiting and sitting in that top spot. He's followed by Sven Thorgren in second and Lion Farrell in third, but we still have two runs to go. Back-to-back -back reigning U.S. Open snowboarding champ Mark McMorris had a very hard start to his season. This season definitely had a big, big challenge to start. I was over in China doing some promotion stuff. Stood up from a signing, and all of a sudden I had this crazy muscle bursa over top of two screws I had in my leg. And then that lasted for a few weeks, and then I had to have surgery and take them out, the two screws, and clear the muscle out. So I definitely had a very challenging start to my season, um, but glad to be snowboarding again. But Mark is so mentally tough, and he's had some of the most horrific injuries and he always comes back and he usually always comes back stronger and you can already see that with this run so far so good one more jump backside triple cork 1440 oh oh that was dirty <laughs> that was insane all right this trick he does here i don't think people realize how tough it is he goes 8 10 on that rotation. 
So if Mark was concerned at all about coming back from an injury, it did not show. And he wraps it up with his backside triple cork 1440. It's the same trick Red did, but that tiny bit of hand drag. This is going to be close. And just like that, McMorris bounces back with a 79.20 that moves him into third place. Winkleman has also bettered his score, moves into fourth place, and now in striking distance of that podium. But the bar of the 80.55 was unattainable as the rest of the field bobbled, fell, and was mostly unable to better their scores. And at this level, these riders need to be absolutely perfect. And one small mistake, they know this run is not going to count and give them the score they want. Even the young Japanese riders had mistakes, and now it's all up to the final third run to get the score they want. So, heading into the last run of the men's slope style competition, it's like this. Luke Winkleman on the bubble in fourth. Mark McMorris sitting in third, with Sven Thorgren in second, chasing that 80.55 set by our leader, Red Gerard. While the first three riders in the re-rack got their best scores, the rest had issues trying to take down Gerard's 80.55. So the podium is set, but in what order? Mark McMorris currently sitting in third. Can he pull off something here and get the unprecedented three-peat at the Burton US Open of Snowboarding Championships? 50-50, hard way back to board slide 270. And there is the front board, 8-10. This is going to be switch back 12. I don't know if you can stomp that any cleaner than that. Double crippler. So far, it's been perfect. One more jump for Mark. And he goes backside, triple cork, 16-20. And that's it. The best McMorris can do is third place. However, can Sven Thorgren pull off the upset? Fifty fifty back three. Board slide two seventy and then the switch board slide rippy flip. Cab twelve sixty. He's gonna get docked for that little bobble right there. He's gotta be perfect from here on out. Oh. And, that's, and it. that's it. Red Gerard, your 2019 Burton U.S. Open snowboarding oh champ God. for slope style. Red, U.S. Open champion, tell me how you're feeling. I don't know, man, I feel insane. This is like, you know, it, it's crazy. Like, I've just, I don't know, I've never expected that I'd even be in the finals at the Open and to win one with such an insane podium. I, I don't know, I'm speechless, man. And here is a look at the final leaderboard. Half of these competitors had never even made it to a final here at the U.S. Open. But big congrats to Red Gerard on his first victory at the U.S. Open. We will move over to the half pipe here in Vail, Colorado for the women's event when we return to the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series presented by Kia Motors America for the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. Slope Style is in the books with two first time finalists taking home gold. I got a feeling that this half pipe has a lot in store for us today. Tina, what can we expect? Oh, and this is the most prestigious event here at the Burton US Open. So much tradition and this half pipe is big. These walls are 22 feet high and the judges score on several things, starting with amplitude. You gotta go big. And you gotta do your tricks. Difficulty, followed by execution, how you land them, how you hold your grabs, and the overall impression. All the competitors that we have spoken to have said that this is the best looking half pipe of the season. So we can definitely expect some big things. First up, Zhutong Kai of Beijing, China. And she has had a phenomenal season so far this year, finishing up on the podium a number of times. Japanese rider Sena Tomita came on strong, edging out Zhutong Kai with a 73.50. Haruna Matsumoto slotted into third with a 
but that was immediately overtaken by the strong riding of American Maddie Mastro as she slid into third place with a 72.25. And then it was another American, Ariel Gold, to drop in. And Ariel, a two-time Olympian, has also been balancing out school at the University of Colorado this year. But she puts together a great first run, finishing off with a Michael Chuck. And Ariel is rewarded accordingly with a 76.37, making her our new leader. I feel really good. I'm just glad that I landed a run, so now I'm going to try and get a 10 down. Well, good luck. Thanks. But there is still one more rider to drop. The five-time X Games gold medalist, the youngest woman to win an Olympic gold in snowboarding, the face of the sport, Chloe Kim. I just kind of focus on myself and do what's best for me. So I never really felt pressure from anyone else to um, really let any type of negativity get to me because I honestly like, don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that's just something that's really helped me um, learn more about myself and I think that was one of the main things I had to do to overcome like a lot of insecurities was because I just cared too much about everyone else's opinions and like what everyone wanted me to do that I just kind of got stuck and lost in that so I don't know I just kind of stopped caring <laughs> Look for something big on this first wall. Big backside air with so much style. Right into the 1080. Cab 900. Links it with a switch. Backside 540. That's a new trick for her. And then a cab 720 and goes down. That is a big shock to see Chloe Kim fall. Clearly not what Kim was hoping for on her first run, and that puts her at the bottom of the standings. Ariel Gold is our leader with that 76.37, followed by Senna Tomita and Zhu Tong Kai in second and third. But I do not expect these scores to hold with two more runs left in women's halfpipe. And you never see Chloe at the bottom. We do know she's riding with a hurt ankle, uh, but she's gonna charge through and right now second runs. As we see right now, Zhu Tong Kai Starting things off big here in her second run as she's sitting in the third spot. Here's that air to fakie, a thing of beauty. This run is looking a little bit more complete than her, than her first run for me. Comes around much better on that 720 to get that those shoulders around. And a cab wow. 900 at the bottom. Now there you go, that was a huge improvement. We are in the 80s for the first time, and Kaiju Tong in the front spot. Senna Tomita, Haruna Matsumoto, and Maddie Mastro all had a difficult time trying to push their riding to catch up to Zhu Tong Kai. Ariel Gold puts down a cleaner run and improves her score to a 81.87. However, she remains in second place. Chloe Kim, with that injured ankle, is still able to put down a solid run, which earns her an 82.50 and moves her into second place. The top three with scores in the 80s, and after two runs, Zhu Tong Kai sits in first with 83.75, followed by Americans Chloe Kim and Ariel Gold in second and third. In between competitions, Kelly Clark and I got a chance to go hit the slopes and catch up on the lift. Um, the Open is just such a great venue, such a such an incredible event. It's um, a little bittersweet not participating this year. It's probably like the first time in 20 years for me, but I, I love where I'm at and I'm grateful I still get to be on my snowboard. Um, do you have some of the women coming up to you and still asking you questions about their runs? Or Yeah, I've been riding with the girls uh, actually all morning today, uh, just working on people's lines and initiations and giving little tips here and there because it's really my wheelhouse. It's, I mean, <laughs> just having you here, I'm sure, means the world to everyone. I mean, it may, like just having you here and being on the lift and finally getting a chance to get a run in with you, um, it means the world. I mean, it's not a US Open without Kelly Clark. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series presented by Kia Motors America for the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. This is the final run of women's half pipe. There you see Chloe Kim watching and resting that injured ankle. She is currently sitting in second place after two runs. But with the re-rack, Maddie Mastro is up and looking to better a 72.25. 
we don't want to rush me into anything that's going to get me hurt since I'm rebuilding. So like the Crippler, the Dub Crip hasn't been something I'm focused on. It's kind of we've just been waiting for like the right mental state. The, when fundamentals are feeling good, I'm feeling good. The tricks are feeling good. There's nothing to be questioned. So like there hasn't really been a uh, concern or like need to do the Dub Crip in practice. But I, who knows about this comp? This is always like... Everything always feels good here. And you could see Maddie up top talking to her new coach, James Jackson, and he's been great for her this year. Staying with that front five that we all love. Into the backside five. Will she push it? She'll stay with the front seven. Into the Hawken. There we go, we got the double. Oh my she goodness! It. She just did! Oh Double my crippler. goodness, you are watching snowboard history right now. First wow. woman ever to land a double crippler. Maddie Mastro just landed the first double crippler. Oh, what a in hero. competition. That was amazing. Did you see her react when she came, when she realized that she did it? Kelly, did you expect that from her? No, that, that shocked me in the booth here. So let's get another look on the replay here. This is just a setup trick for her, the hawk and flip. And here we go, here's the moment of truth. Winding up, textbook, perfect. Spotting her landing the entire time. Tranny finder, that was perfect. And she couldn't have chosen a better time to land this trick. Look at that, what a special moment. And with that historic run, Maddie becomes our new leader with an 84.74. I'm literally out of words of how happy and overwhelmed I am. I've been, I literally go to bed dreaming about doing that. So I'm just like, I'm just so, so happy. You, did you do any in practice at all? Um, no, we, I was just talking to my coach at the top and he's like, well, I'm gonna scramble your brain a bit. How do you, what do you think about this? And I was like, let me see if I can visualize it. And if I'm visualizing it, it's on. And I saw it and we're like, okay, let's go. You're on, like, just don't think, just do. And yeah, so no, I didn't do it in practice. <laughs> Haven't done one in a while. <laughs> well, congratulations, that was amazing. Thank you so much, I'm so happy. Maddie Mastro has just set the standard for what it's going to take to win this 2019 Burton U.S. Open. Chloe Kim, our defending champ, undefeated all season. She's battling an ankle injury. This woman is a champ. She knows how to get it done. Can she block out the pain with a winning run right now? Dropping into that backside wall with a huge method. Right into that front side 1080. Tell grab much better. Right into that cab nine. Here we go with that switch back five. Much better. And we will see it, folks, with the cab 1080. What a run. When all was on the line, she not only improved on that 1080, she had the tail grab much better. The setup trick was much better. Yeah, you could see when she dropped in, she meant business. This was a different run for her, just from how she charged into that first hit. This was absolutely phenomenal. Watch the size of that big backside method. And this cab 900 was huge. She knew she had to do this if she wanted to bump into those top positions. With the cap 10 just missing the grab again. It'll be interesting to see where they place this. Point one wow. difference. And Maddie holds on to the lead. We have one more rider to go. Next up, Zhutong Kai of Beijing, China. We'll see if she has any more tricks. We'll see if she can pull out any other stops. She's gonna add, she's gonna have to add something to bump it up. There's that front side 900, right into that backside 540. And that was big. Into the air to fakey. Executed so well. Here's that cab 720. And she'll go with the front side seven into the cab nine. So that's the same run that she did for her second run. Um, arguably, it was a slightly cleaner, but we'll see what the judges think. An 80.87. Zhutang Kai will not improve and stays in third place, making Maddie Mastro 
our 2019 Burton U.S. Open snowboarding champion. I'm just fully overwhelmed. I cannot be like any more just filled with happiness. This is my first contest that I've won, and especially the first contest to be at the U.S. Open is just like this incredible, amazing feeling. I can't even put it into words to describe how incredible I'm feeling right now. A huge moment for women's snowboarding, but an even bigger moment for Maddie Mastro, taking her first win after a season dominated by Chloe Kim, who still managed to get second despite a severe ankle injury, rounded out by Zhu Tong Kai in third. We are not done yet. Men's half pipe is up next when we return to Vail, Colorado for the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series presented by Kia Motors America for the Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships, the final competition here in Vail, the men's halfpipe. Big names on the start list, but the man to watch is Scotty James. He is looking to win and clinch a perfect season. The format is the same as the women, best of three runs scored out of a possible 100 points. And here we go in run one. Here comes Danny Davis from Chucky, Hella Lake Tahoe. Yeah, Danny is an absolutely incredible snowboarder. I mean, so creative and so amazing. He is called your favorite snowboarder's favorite snowboarder, and this is why. Backside 360 into the Pop-Tart, front side nose bone, coupling that with a massive McTwist. And then the front side double cork 1080, Danny Davis, is a throwback to what halfpipe riding has always represented creativity, style, and amplitude, and what a way to kick off halfpipe finals. And the bar has been set by the technical style master Danny Davis with a 79.62 on his first run. Canadian Derek Livingston had a solid first run as well, putting down a 78.12. Ruka Hirano of Japan seemed unaffected by the falling snow and kept it going with a 79.25. Next up is Raibu Katayama. Taking a little space for himself before pointing it and coming in hot. Look at that pre ollie landing high on that transition wall, starting things off with a massive backside air grabbing method into the front side, 1080 to the moon. And then the cab, double 10. Front side, 900. Backside, 1260 from Raibu Katayama. And then the front, wow. double 1260. Raibu Katayama just put every competitor at the US Open officially on notice. That was the best run I have seen him do all season long. Look at how high this first hit is. He's got to be at least 40 feet plus above that flat bottom and just so much style too. This is what the US Open's all about. And Raibu is rewarded for going huge, a 90.49, the new score to beat. Raibu, that run was amazing. Just tell me the emotions you're feeling right now. I can feel what happened to me. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm so freaking out. <sighs> well deserved, how do you go, how do you step it up from there? Uh, higher and higher, it's of course. <laughs> well good luck Raibu, amazing first run. Whew. Now here we go. If you're not sitting at home, you should sit. You know Tiger's got his red shirt on Sunday, what does Scotty James got on Sunday? My season has been uh, pretty special so far. Currently undefeated. We are at the US Open. Um, it's my last competition. And um, you know, hopefully I can finish off strong. It'd be nice to uh, stand up at the top of every podium this year, but you know, I'm just gonna enjoy the week and let the rest just happen for me. Wow, switchback double cork 1080. Into the backside double cork 1260. Oh, he's going for it. Big front side 1080 with the nose grab. Into the cab double cork 1080, going to the moon. Finishing it off with a front side double cork 1260, and yep. Yo. Scotty came to play. Hold up. 
the way that Scotty drops in, the fact that he drops in switch. Watch this. Switch backside 1080, and he's so high on that. And then he combines it with the backside double cork 1260. So that combination alone. That's one of the hardest combinations in competitive half pipe riding right now. And this is the money maker right here. Front side double cork 1260. <laughs> 92 even. He did it. Wow. Feels amazing to put a solid one down. Uh, you know, it's actually pretty fast in there. The snow's not really affecting us. So uh, strapped in for a good day. It's going to be an awesome day for Borden. And um, yeah, it's nice to put the first one down. Top qualifier, Yuto Totsuka, drops in last and earns a very solid 84.49, enough for third place. The benchmark for the men's half pipe. The 90s, current leader Scotty James with a 92, Raibu Katayama in second with a 90.49. Two more runs to go, but the riders finding execution on the second run difficult. And you can see that new snow falling, and sometimes that just completely throws a rider off, both on speed, timing, the landings. Even riders like Jake Pates, who's so consistent, one small mistake, and he's off his line. Raibu Katayama, trying to go higher, couldn't land cleanly. And even our leader, Scotty James, unable to hold on. So after two runs, our leaderboard is like this. The USA's Danny Davis sits in fourth, followed by Japanese riders Yuto Totsuka in third and Raibu Katayama in second. First place, Scotty James with a 92. One run left, one chance to put it all on the line. Can Scotty James hold on to that top spot and clinch a perfect season? The final of the men's halfpipe when we return. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series presented by Kia Motors America for the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. The final run for the men's halfpipe competition starts now. Scotty James sits in first with a 92, and with the re-rack of the start list for this final run, he will be the last to drop. And third and final runs where the pressure is mounting. Some of the riders got their best scores of the day, including Pat Bergner, but a slight hand drag cost them the podium. And Kent Callister overcoming a big fall earlier is still able to boost over the crowd. And coming to you from South Korea, Kwon Ki Lee scores a 62.50. And then it's all about one of the favorites, Danny Davis. Styles out of McTwist, has problems with the landing and finishes in fourth position. Three riders left to go. All three will podium, but can either of the Japanese riders take out Scotty James' score of a 92? First up is Yuto Totsuka sitting in third with that 84.49. Huge frontside 540. Into the backside 900. That was massive. Frontside double cork 14 to the cap 1080. And a 1260 to round it out. Did you see the compression coming out of that final hit? That was ridiculous that he held on to that trick. He looked like he got blown out of the barrel. Unbelievable. The compression, the speed, the G-forces. OK, emotions aside. Is this going to be enough? So he goes backside 900 here. Scotty has a backside 1260. He does do this frontside double cork 1440. That's something that Scotty is not doing. The cab 1080 does two grabs on that and then finishes off with a frontside double cork 1260. They are both finishing off with this same trick. Yeah, this is going to be super interesting to see where it comes in at. And 87.12, it's an improvement, but not enough to move him further up the podium. He finishes his day in a respectable third place. And now there is one rider left. 
to unseat Mr. Scotty James. This right now, this is one of those beautiful pieces of history in the Burton US Open. Can Raibu Katayama do it on his final run? That was a gigantic method. Into the front side, 1440. Cab, double cork 1080 right there. And then the front side, 900. And then goes for a backside 1260, but comes up short. And that's it. That is it. Scotty James has just won his very first Burton US Open. This is big. I mean, this is absolutely major for him. Huge congratulations. This victory lap undefeated the entire season. And that is so understated. That is such a hard thing to do with the level of competition in competitive pipe riding today. To think about winning every single contest that you enter is ridiculous. And he's just having fun. We saw a nice shot of his brother and dad down the bottom. Look at this. High fives for the crowd. I love it. Scotty James is your 2019 Burton US Open men's half pipe champion. Scotty, you have now continued to keep your undefeated season going, but you get to engrave your name amongst legends, US Open champion. How are you feeling? Man, I, uh, I can't find words that describe how I feel right now. I'm pinching myself. It was in 2007, I came to my first US Open. And I watched everyone ride, and I was with my mom, and I said I want to be in the finals one day, and here I am, you know. I, I came out, and I stayed on my toes all day. Everyone has been riding so well, and I just wanted to ride my snowboard the way I do, and I was able to do that and just let the rest happen, so I'm absolutely over the moon. A truly incredible achievement by Scotty James. Tina, we had four first-time winners at the US Open. I know, I love it. And you know, they're all Olympians, but you could just tell winning here at the US Open is extra special. I mean, this is a snowboarders event. And that is a wrap. Snowboard history once again. Thank you for joining us at the 2019 Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. Progression reigning supreme at the Open. Congrats to Zoe Sadowski, Sanat, and Red Gerard, the new guard taking the wins in slope style. And there's so much to say with a perfectly built half pipe, it is hard not to be in awe of what we witnessed. The performance by Scotty James, that's championship performance getting that perfect season. Didn't lose an event at all this entire season. They were personal first and historical first. Maddie Mastro had a dream of making a double crippler in a contest, becomes the first woman ever to do it. She embodies what progression means in women's snowboarding. And for that, she gets the Red Bull signature moment. We look forward to more from Maddie as her career moves forward. The Red Bull signature series travels from the snowy mountains of Vail, Colorado, to the Styrian Mountains of Austria for the 25th edition of the Crown Jewel of Hard Enduro. 500 riders start, only a handful will finish at the Iron Giant. Be sure to join us for the Ayersberg Rodeo, Red Bull Hair Scrambled. Once again, thank you for hanging out with us in Vail at the Open. Be sure to follow us in any manner that you get social. On behalf of our killer crew, Tina Dixon, Tom Monterosso, Kelly Clark, and Louis Vito, I am Sal Masichella, and we will see you next time. Pushing the boundaries of what is possible. Add snow and fired up fans, and you've got yourself everyone's favorite.